Today, my friends, we've got the newest edition of the Tamron lineup to look at. It's the 28-300 F4 to 7.1. Definitely mediocre, not impressive aperture range, but a great focal range. 28 to 300 is incredibly versatile. So it's gonna take what the 50 to 300 here and the 400 can do. Um, and pretty much give us the wide end that we're looking for in an all around shooting lens. So this is gonna be a great everyday carry or a travel lens. Um, again, there's gonna be some sacrifices, of course, uh, with that huge focal range is gonna come uh, the cost of, of aperture. And if you're somebody who shoots a lot of, you know, low light photography or night stuff, this is probably not gonna be the best lens for you. Um, that said, none of these are really. This is gonna be for a really good light. And of course, in this day and age, we've got a lot of really great products uh, to help us with, uh, you know, the post editing of dealing with higher ISOs. But let's just focus on and giving my first impressions of this little guy here. We also have the 28 to 200 here that's a few years old now. I really like that lens. It's got a fast f2.8 starting at 28 and that can be used in the studio and whatnot. But this guy is kind of more of a kind of an everyday maybe getting into wildlife shooting or birds or getting a little bit more reach than that 200. You're going to notice quite a big difference there. But compared to the 50 to 300 and the 50 to 400 here, as you can see, way more compact. It weighs pretty much nothing. I think it's about 1.3 pounds, which is really impressive considering uh, the zoom and the range that you get. Starting at that F4 and going to F7.1 on the long end is really nothing impressive in terms of aperture. I wanted to quickly touch on two aspects that I felt were very strong about this lens. And one of them is the minimum focus distance and the magnification ratio you can get at 28 millimeters. I love that Tamron has extended this feature to this lens, giving you almost macro light capabilities and making this lens even more versatile on the wide side. The other thing that I noticed right away is that the image stabilization in this lens is incredible, really far and beyond what I really expected out of a lens in this price range. And because this is a slower lens, if you are gonna shoot in lower light situations, know that the image stabilization is going to be of huge benefit. In terms of aperture performance, it's less than ideal in my books. And here's a look at what that exactly looks like as you're zooming in. In terms of the build, it's the same quality, the same feel as the rest of Tamron's line for the most part, definitely with these two. For buttons and switches, all you're gonna get here is a little lock switch and one single customizable focus hold button there, which is nice, I do like to see that added, uh, but it's pretty much bare bones other than that. You've got a big, nice grippy zoom ring here and a little tiny focus ring at the back that you're probably not gonna use a ton, to be honest with you. All three lenses here are gonna have that handy little customizable focus hold button to allow you to program it to function as a automatic manual focus switch to rack focus and a few more really cool things that you can do in the app or on your computer and then the 50 to 400 here is going to be kind of the bigger the heavier uh, the further reaching bit more bells and whistles lens here but I think they're kind of tailoring these two to more of your your beginner or intermediate or travel friendly lens just because of the amazing compact size and weight of this guy so it's got your typical 67 millimeter filter threads that they are kind of famous for these days. Just about every lens in their entire line here is gonna be 67 millimeters. It's weather sealed with a nice metal mount back here and a little rubber gasket. It does have this little USB port here for firmware updates and as well as customizing that little button on the fly. Um, and yeah, other than that, how does it actually perform? Well, initial tests, I have to say, are pretty impressive. The VXD focusing motors mean that the autofocus is very fast, very reliable, and exactly what we expect out of the Tamron line these days. Here's a 50 shot sequence that I took, and I was pretty impressed seeing just a few slight misses here. Overall, with fast moving subjects moving towards you, this thing does hold up pretty well. Tamron's autofocus performance in the last few years has come a long way and it's amazing to see this type of consistency in just about every lens that they've released in the last little bit. Once again, given the relatively slow aperture of this lens, low light scenarios are going to be a different story, but if you do find yourself in some decent light, this is the results that you can expect. At 899, 
Does it make sense? And that's kind of going to be the question for a lot of people here. I think it does if it's the right lens for you, meaning that if you're looking for a great travel again or all around everyday shooter, I think this is going to be a fantastic pickup. It's going to be miles ahead over your kit lens and it does offer a ton in here being a, a really compact and lightweight option. Uh, now that said, you also get the amazing Tamron warranty, of course, six, seven years, depending on where you're from. And the autofocus performance all around is really not gonna let you down at all. So it's gonna be great for photos as well as videos. It's got basically no focus breathing, and it is gonna let you go from that nice wide shot and really get in there at 300 to shoot the details. Now sharpness, I won't dive deep into that in this video. I'm gonna be testing that and it's gonna be in my full in-depth review coming up here. And in terms of sharpness, it looks like it's going to be pretty good. For the corners, it's not gonna be the best and that's to be expected in something with this huge focal range. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be on par for performance with these other two lenses, absolutely. I think it really, in this day and age, you're not gonna find a bad lens optically, especially in the center when it, where it really matters for the majority Majority of people. Overall, I think uh, this is going to be another winner if you don't do a lot of low light photography or don't need a really fast aperture lens. I think this is going to be great for, again, for traveling or somebody who doesn't want a big heavy lens while they're out on uh, shooting wildlife or excursions or backpacking maybe. I think it might be a great option. Now's your chance to drop down in the comments any and all questions you might want answered in my full in-depth review. I'll do my best to answer them and or include them in my upcoming video. Make sure to watch often, like, subscribe, and comment for your chance to win giveaways and even lenses like this. Exciting to see yet another great lens added to Tamron's lineup. I would love to see kind of a more high-end, uh, 35 to 150 style telephoto, uh, maybe blow our minds with a 100 to 500 uh, super fast aperture, something crazy, maybe even constant aperture, that'd be great. Um, but in the meantime, it's great to see more options. More options are always better, and I can't wait to see what they come out with next time. I will mention as well that if you're getting started and you don't have the big budget maybe for something with a hugely fast aperture and you have to rely on those ISOs getting pumped up, well, check out something like Topaz Labs Photo AI or their Denoise AI software. It's fantastic. It's very reasonably priced. I do have a full in-depth review on that if you wanna check that out. I really strongly recommend that software and I'm in no way sponsored by them at all. Thanks so much to Tamron for sending me this lens for review, but as always, it's my complete own opinion Opinion, the good and the bad so if you appreciate that guys uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button join the community and like always make mistakes be yourself and get out there and take some more pictures see you next time